last time we had uh, introduced this topic of two dimensional transformations we will go into details of this topic today the first uh, two dimensional transformation is a uh, operation of translation so if we have any point xy and that is translated by a vector given by tx ty then we can say that the transform point x prime y prime will be equal to xy multiplied by sorry xy plus the transformation vector which is tx ty okay so x prime will be equal to x plus tx and y prime will be equal to y plus ty the simple translation operation in which all entities will get translated by a uniform vector okay the shape etc of the entities will be retained the other operation that we had seen last time was rotation and we said that in rotation about the origin by an angle theta any point xy will get transformed to a point in this manner and we had said that x prime y prime will be equal to xy multiplied by a matrix which is cos theta sin theta minus sin theta and cos theta okay so x prime will be equal to xy multiplied by cos theta minus sin theta which is x prime will be equal to x cos theta minus y sin theta and y prime will be x sin theta plus y cos theta okay this will be a transform point x prime y prime okay the third uh, transformation that we had seen last time for the scaling operation and in scaling it said that x prime y prime will be xy multiplied by a scaling matrix which will be sx0 and 0sy okay x coordinate will get multiplied by sx the y coordinate will get multiplied by sy this is the scaling operation so if we have a figure like this and scale it by a factor of 2 it will become something like this okay all the x coordinates will get multiplied by 2 the y coordinates will also get multiplied by 2 of all the points this is the scaling uh, operation so, now let's see reflection if you have any arbitrary point xy and we reflect it about the y axis this point will be x prime y prime which will be nothing but minus x y okay so when you are reflecting about the y axis the transformation can be written as x prime y prime will be equal to x y multiplied by minus 1 0 0 1 similarly if you are reflecting about the x axis this point will go somewhere down at this location and the coordinates would then become x minus y and this matrix will become 1 0 0 1 okay so similarly if you reflect about the origin that means we take this radial line proceeded in this direction and we get a point in that direction which is minus x minus y and for reflecting about the origin the transformation matrix will be minus 1 0 0 0 minus 1 
okay so when you are reflecting about the y axis the x axis uh, will become uh, the, the x coordinate will uh, change its sign when you reflect about the x axis the y coordinate will change the sign when you reflect about the origin both the coordinates will change the sign okay now if we compare these matrices with the scaling operations we, can, we notice that for reflecting about the y axis it is nothing but the scaling operation with s x equal to minus 1 and s y equal to plus 1 okay similarly the other two reflections can also be captured as scaling operations okay so reflection is nothing but a specific case of scaling whenever we want to reflect a point or an entity about either the x axis y axis or about the origin that can always be obtained by scaling by having the correct values of sx and sy okay either one or both of them will be minus 1 okay so for the four operation that we've seen you can summarize in this manner translation is captured by x prime y prime is equal to xy plus dx dy rotation is captured by x prime y prime is equal to x y multiplied by cos theta sin theta sin theta cos theta okay and scaling is captured by the equations okay and of course reflection is a specific case of scaling okay now in these three basic operations if you notice translation is captured by the addition of two matrices while both rotation as well as scaling are captured by multiplication of two matrices okay and multiplication is definitely more convenient because let's say if you take any point in this coordinate system we first want to rotate it about the origin we get this point then maybe we want to translate it and go to the third point we can capture that as a sequence of rotation a sequence of transformation sorry we will get point p1 will be equal to the point p multiplied by some transformation matrix t1 where this t1 corresponds to this rotation now this point let us say is to be scaled if this point is to be scaled, we will say P2 will be equal to P1 multiplied by some other transformation matrix T2, which is nothing but P into T1 T2. Okay. So, if all our matrix, uh, all the transformations are captured as matrix multiplications, the transformations can be very easily, multiple transformations can be very easily captured. Okay, essentially with this same we will define what are called as homogeneous coordinates homogeneous coordinates every point x y will now be written as x multiplied by some number h y multiplied by some number h and h ok so point x y instead of being written as a tuple will now be written as a as consisting of three numbers ok so if you have a point let us say 2 3 this point can be written as 2 3 1 it can also be written as 4 6 2 okay it can also be written as 
1.5 all these represent the same point okay basically what we'll do is whatever be the value of this homogeneous coordinate we'll divide both of these by that value okay and then when this value is equal to 1 these two will give us the exact x and y values Okay, so any point x y can always be represented as x y one. So x y one is one of the homogeneous coordinate representation of the point x y. Okay, we have basically added one more coordinate to a two-dimensional point, and the advantage is that to start with, we are talking of translation. Earlier we had written x prime y prime is equal to x y plus t x t y. Okay, now x prime y prime will now be written as x prime y prime one. This will be equal to x y one, and now since our points consist of three coordinates. A transformation matrix will also be a three by three matrix, and for translation, we'll get one zero 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 one zero t x t y one. Okay, we can say this is h. So x prime will be x y one multiplied by this column vector of one zero two x, which is nothing but x plus t x. Y prime will be x y one multiplied by this column vector, which is nothing but y plus t y. Okay, and the homogeneous coordinate h will be just this uh, row vector multiplied by this column vector, and we'll get one. Okay, this way even translation can be captured easily as matrix multiplication. Okay, the other two operations. Talking of rotation, x prime y prime h will be equal to x y one multiplied by the basic matrix will remain the same. In other places, we'll just add zeros and ones. Okay, this way x prime will be equal to this row vector multiplied by this column vector, which gives us the same equation as we had earlier. Similarly, y prime will be this row vector multiplied by this column vector, which will again give us the same equation as earlier. And homogeneous coordinate will just give us one. Okay, so rotations can also be captured in a similar manner. Then scaling. That can also be captured in a similar manner. When we have to scale by an amount of s x, this row vector will get multiplied by this column vector, and x prime is equal to s x times x x. And y prime is equal to s y times y. So homogeneous coordinate h will again be equal to one. Okay. So this way, by using homogeneous coordinates, we are first able to capture translation by this matrix multiplication operation. Okay. And similarly, even rotation and scaling. Are captured as matrix multiplication operations. Okay. 
We're keeping h equal to one. Yes. Also use the like ideal third parameter instead of making x dash y dash multiplied by x x x x y divide by. If we divide h by one over s x, we'll get uniform scaling in both the directions. Again. Multiplying by one over. Okay, I, I, I'll just come to that in a minute. The reason why we've added homogeneous coordinate is the first primary reason is that translation should be captured as matrix multiplication. Okay, if we don't add the homogeneous coordinate, translation will not be captured as a homo, as a matrix multiplication. Okay, as a result of that, we'll not be able to combine different kinds of uh, transformation by a single matrix. Okay, we'll just see how that is uh, to be done. The second thing that you are saying that instead of this one, if I change this to some value, let's say one over s. Okay, if I change it to one over s, and these for the timing of let's say both equal to one. Now we'll get uniform scaling in the x and the y direction. Not different scaling. We'll get uniform. Yeah, you won't get different scaling. You'll get uniform scaling in the x and the y direction. Okay, this is one, this is one, and this is one over s. This point will become x, y, and one over s, which is identical to x times s, y times s, and one. Okay, so if we want uniform scaling in both the directions, we can just give a one over s factor in the bottom right corner of the transformation matrix. Okay. If you want non-uniform scaling, then we need to give one factor over here and one factor over here. Okay. If you want to translate a point, then we need to add some value here and some value here. If we need to rotate a point about the origin, then we'll have some value cos theta here, sin theta here, minus sin theta here, and cos theta here. This is when we want to rotate by an angle of theta. Counterclockwise about the origin. Okay. Now, I had mentioned that if you have to combine different operations, different transformations. We can take any point P, transform it by matrix P one, and we get, let's say, the point P one. Okay, we can take this point P one, transform it by another matrix, and we'll get P two will be equal to P times P one T two. And continue this operation, we finally get P n, which will be P T one T two multiplied till T n. Okay, this means that for transforming any point P, we can take each of these individual transformations, multiply them together, or united like this. I can get one combined transformation matrix for all these transformations. Okay, this we are able to do purely because all the transformation there are. Represented in the form of matrix multiplications. Okay, we just see one specific example of where this kind of thing is very useful. So far, when you're talking of rotation, we're rotating a point about the origin. Okay, we're taking a point x, y, and you're rotating it about the origin by an angle of theta. Instead of that, if I have a point x, y, and I want to rotate it about any arbitrary point a, b.
ओके हाउ डू आई फाइंड आउट द वैल्यूज ऑफ एक्स प्राइम एंड वाई प्राइम आई नो दैट इज आई एम रोटेटिंग अबाउट द ओरिजिन आई नो वोट इज ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन मेट्रिक्स मेन फॉर दैट ओके इफ दिस इज द केस आई कैन इजिली गेट एक्स प्राइम वाई प्राइम वन विल बी इक्वल टू एक्स वाई एक्स वाई वन मल्टीप्लाइड बाय सम ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन मेट्रिक्स मेन फॉर रोटेशन बट इफ आई हैोटेट अबाउट द पॉइंट ए बी हाउ डू आई फाइंड द ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन मेट्रिक्स फॉर दिस केस ओके वॉट वील डू इज विल ट्रांसलेट एक्सेस सच दैट ए बी बिकम्स द ऑरिजिन ओके दिस ऑरिजिन शुड कम टू दिस लोकेशन will then rotate the point x y to x prime y prime okay and then we'll translate this axis back to this position okay so a uh, step 1 <coughs> would be to translate origin to a b okay step 2 would be to rotate by theta about origin okay and step 3 would be to rotate sorry to translate origin back to its original position okay so for rotating a, a point about any arbitrary point that can be done as a sequence of these three steps and how do we translate the origin to the point ab What will be the transformation matrix for that? Anyone? Translate all the points to minus a minus b. We'll translate all the points by minus a minus b. Okay, not by a b. So trans transformation matrix for this will be one zero 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 one zero minus a minus b one. Okay, then the first transformation matrix T one will be equal to this. is that okay is this clear so why we are using minus a and minus b over here no okay see what we want is that this point ab should now have the coordinate of 0 0 okay so to a and b i have to add minus a and minus b that means what i am effectively doing is this point is being translated back to the origin by, by this one. the translation vector is minus a minus b not just ab okay so in a translating the origin to ab that is the origin should become this point that is coordinates of ab should now become 0 0 that is a negative translation by ab or, trans or translation by minus a minus b okay so the first step is we translate the origin to ab using this transformation matrix then we'll rotate by theta about the origin what is the transformation matrix for that the same as a one for rotation cos theta sin theta 0 minus sin theta cos theta 0 0 0 1 okay for trans uh, for rotation about the origin we'll use the same matrix as it is meant for rotation by an angle theta then translating the origin back how do we translate the origin back again one inverse the inverse of t1 or 
that would be a b okay this would be 100010 a b a b 1 okay and we want to or uh, transfer the origin back again this point should retain the coordinate of ab okay the point which was 0 0 should now retain the coordinate of ab so we'll add ab to all the coordinates okay so if we combine these three a combined transformation matrix will be the product of the three transformation matrices okay or we can also write this as t1 t2 and t1 inverse Okay, and now if you want to rotate any arbitrary point x y about the point a b, all that we need to do is p prime will be equal to p times t. Is that okay? So this way, we can combine any sets of transformations into a single uh, transformation. Okay. Similarly, if you want to we have a point arbitrary point x y and we want to reflect it about an inclined axis. How do we reflect a point about the x or the y axis? We we'll use the scaling uh, operations. Okay, now if you want to reflect it about any arbitrary axis. Okay, let's say the axis is passing through the point A B. And has got direction cosines of L M. Okay, how do we reflect the point X Y about this axis? Anyone? First, translate we translate the origin to this point so that this AB now becomes the origin. Okay, so we are translating by a vector of minus A minus B. Okay, then we rotate. Okay, for this we will get some transformation matrix T1. Then we rotate the axis so that this uh, this direction coincides with the let's say the x-axis. Okay, that means in the first step, my axis has become like this. In the second step, my I rotate my axis so that my axis becomes like this. Okay, that is rotate. This will give us a transformation matrix T two. Then I'll reflect about the x-axis. That will give us a transformation matrix T three. And then I'll do the reverse of these two. Okay, so the combined transformation will become T. Will be T one, T two, T three. T two inverse T one inverse. Okay, the sequence is important. I cannot take the inverses in the opposite order. Okay, I am doing T one then T two, so the inverses have to be taken T two inverse first, then T one inverse. Okay, any questions on this part? These individual transformation matrix matrices, you should be able to write them on your own. Okay. Transformation matrix for translation, for rotation, for reflection, 
and the reverse of these two transformations. Okay. So only one thing you should be careful about is in step two, when you are rotating the axis, let's say this angle. an angle theta, we will have to write the transformation matrix for minus theta. Okay, Because what we want is that this direction should not become the x axis. Okay, So, a point on this axis will be a point on the x axis. So, this point which is earlier x y should now become let us say some x prime 0. Okay, that will be obtained when I am rotating actually by an angle of minus theta. Okay. Similarly, translation we have done minus a minus v, the rotation will be by minus theta. Okay. Reflection in T2 inverse, here we will have rotation by theta and translation by a b. So, we have basically seen how we can combine different operations and get a combined transformation matrix for a series of operations. The the basic advantage that we have of using homogeneous coordinates, the first advantage was that Translation can be captured as matrix multiplication. Okay. The second advantage that we have seen is uniform scaling can be captured by one single parameter. Okay. The third view that we have seen is that transformations can be combined. Okay. One more advantage of using homogeneous coordinates is that if we want to represent a point at infinity, that is infinity in this direction. We can take any point here x y and x y 0 will be a point at infinity in that direction. Okay, Because we have said that our homogeneous coordinate x y h actually corresponds to x by h, y by h and 1. So, if this h is equal to 0 this point represents a point at infinity okay, in the direction of x y. So, another advantage of using homogeneous coordinates is points at infinity can be easily captured. Okay. Now, in the homogeneous transformation matrix, you have got 9 terms. Okay, I will just write them as A, B, C. Of these 9, we have seen that this is the homogeneous coordinate, it gives uniform scaling. Okay. These 4 are giving us uh, rotation. These two, in addition to rotation, they also give us uh, scaling, okay. And these two are giving us translation. So far, these two we have retained at zero for all transformations. We have not tried to modify these two, okay. We'll see later on that these two are used for capturing perspective transformations. You know what is the perspective view? 
no and you will see that later if you want to capture the perspective view of any object then we'll be using these two coordinates to capture the perspective transformation okay so another advantage that we will see of these homogeneous coordinates later on will be perspective transform transformations can easily be captured a perspective view can easily be obtained by the transformations okay so these are some of the advantages of using homogeneous coordinates any questions on this part? okay then we just extend this idea to transformation in three dimensions so if you have any 3d point So if you have any 3D point, which is x, y, z, again we'll directly go into homogeneous coordinate. This will represent as x times h, y times h, z times h, and x. Okay, so this will be a 3D point will be represented as a four tuple. Okay, the h is the, the fourth coordinate will be the homogeneous coordinate. Translation. I don't think I need to define translation again. The translation matrix will be a four by four matrix now. Okay, so we want to translate any point by T X T Y T Z. In the bottom row, we have T X, T Y, and T Z in one place. Okay. Scaling. For scaling, we'll get S X zero zero zero. Okay, one by S is for uniform scaling. S X, S Y, and S Z are for non-uniform scaling. Okay. Now let's come to rotation. <coughs> In the two-dimensional case, we are rotating about a point. Which was the origin? In a three-dimensional case, we can't rotate about a point. We have to ro ro rotate about an axis. Okay. So let's take the first case. We want to rotate about the z-axis by an angle theta. Counterclockwise, as we look from the top. Okay, for that, what will be a transformation matrix? X prime, Y prime, Z prime. The other three points. What will be the value of X prime? Our initial point was X, Y, Z. Prime will be equal to x cos theta minus y sin theta. Y prime will be equal to x sin theta plus y cos theta, and z prime will be the same as z. Okay, the value of z prime will not change since we are rotating about the z axis. Any arbitrary point. Let's say here we are rotating it like this. The z value will remain the same. Okay. So the transformation matrix for this case would be C S minus C. C C 
स्टैंड फॉर कॉसिडा एस स्टैंड फॉर सेंटीडा ओके सो दिस इज द ट्रांसमिशन मैट्रिक्स फॉर रोटेटिंग अबाउट द जेड एक्सिस वी कैन राइट इट एज टी जेड एन एंगल थीटा This is the transformation matrix for this operation. Now, if you want to rotate about the x-axis, what will be the transformation matrix? For rotation about the x-axis, my an angle theta. The x-coordinate has to remain unchanged. Okay, so this will be one, zero, zero. These four values we have to fill up. What will they be? Cos, sine, minus sine, cos. Is that okay? I have directly written the result. It should be quite uh, clear as to how we got this. Okay. And to rotate the about theta, so, uh, sorry, about the y-axis. The y coordinate will remain unchanged. These four coordinates, these four uh, values, will have to fill up. What will these values be? Exit plane now. This is x. This is z. I am rotating by an angle of theta. This is my point P. This will be my point P prime. The z value of this point is going to decrease. The sign will be the negative of this. So this will be plus. This will be minus. You can verify it from this figure. Okay, the z value is decreasing, the x value is increasing. Okay, so the x value will be c times the cos theta times uh, cos theta times x plus sin theta times z. Okay, the y value will remain unchanged. Okay, so when we want to uh, rotate about the y-axis by an angle theta, this will be the transformation matrix. Okay, so the basic uh, transformations we have seen. So the basic transformations were translation, scaling, then. Rotation about the x-axis, so yeah, about the z-axis, and about the x and the y-axis. Okay. Now, from these basic operations, let's try and get some of the other operations. The first is reflections. Okay. If you want to reflect about the x-y plane. 
what will happen? The z value will become negative. Okay, the rest will remain the same. Okay, similarly, if you want to reflect about the x z plane, the y value will become negative. Okay, so for that. 1 minus 1 1 1 all the others will be 0 if you want to reflect about the yz plane we will have minus 1 1 1 all the others will be 0 ok if you want to reflect about an axis so if you want to reflect about the x axis What will happen? Both y and z values will become will change. Okay. Similarly, we want to reflect about the y axis. X and z values will change. If you want to reflect about the z axis, x and y values will change. If you want to reflect about the origin, reflecting about the origin, all the values will change. Okay, so reflections are very easily captured as scaling operations. Okay, now let's again talk about rotation. A rotation about any arbitrary point or an about an arbitrary axis. So, we want to rotate about an axis like this. Okay, this is let's say the point A, B, C, and this vector has got direction cosines of L. M N. Okay. How do we rotate about this arbitrary vector? We have any point x y z. This is my x axis. This is my y axis. This is my z axis. I want to rotate this point x y z about this vector. So we'll get something like this. Again by an angle theta. Okay, this will be transformed to some point over here. This is P, this will be transformed to P prime. How do we find out the coordinates of P prime? What will be the sequence of steps involved? Anyone? We translate so that this becomes the origin. Translate by minus a minus b minus c. So now my axis will look something like this. What is the next step? We rotate so that rotate such that. element coincide with one axis, any axis actually. For the sake of argument, let's just say as with the z axis. This will take two rotations. This will take two rotations. Okay, what will be two rotations? We will first rotate so that this vector comes into the exit plane, then we will rotate so that it coincides with the z. So this, will, this is one matrix P1, this will be two rotations, let us say R1 and R2. Okay. Then we will carry out the actual rotation.
Okay, that let's say is R. Okay, and then we will say the reverse of steps reverse two and one. Okay, but whatever transformation is obtained in step two, we'll do the opposite of that. Whatever transformation is obtained in step one, we'll do the opposite. Of that. Okay, the combined transformation will come out to be T1, R1, R2, R, R2 inverse, R1 inverse, T1 inverse. So if you want to rotate point x, y, z about any arbitrary vector, that will be done by a sequence of these seven steps. Okay. In the next class, what you will see is how these two rotations are done. What will be the angles and about which axis these rotations will be done? Okay, we'll see that in detail in the next. Again, okay. okay. yeah. Same thing. We'll put this as T two, and this will become T two inverse. Okay, you take this as let's say T two, and then this as C two inverse. Yeah. You can do that, yeah. but once you have multiplied the three matrices, finding out the inverse is going to be a difficult job. Four by four. Four by four matrices. You have to find out the inverse by inverse uh, by, by the matrix inverse algorithm. For each of these individuals, the inverse is just the rotation by an opposite angle of minus theta. So these uh, this T two inverse can be found out easily by matrix multiplication. Very easy. Okay, that is I will prefer to do this kind of thing. Nevertheless, you can come, uh, multiply them, then find out the inverse. This will get the same result. Okay. Any other questions? Okay.